All right, hello everyone. So uh, this video is actually uh, the first of two parts um, of where I'm gonna talk about tests for series convergence. Um, I wanna try and keep the videos kind of a little, uh, I want them to be a little shorter and digest, more digestible. Um, so I, I've kind of broken up the, all the different tests for series convergence into, into two different um, pieces. And in particular, um, what I wanna focus on in this uh, particular video, well, first are some of the different tests for convergence, uh, but I also want to focus on being very careful about uh, understanding how to apply these different tests, um, because if we're not careful about how we apply them, uh, we can sometimes end up with some wrong results. So um, let's get started. So again, um, these are some things that, that we've mentioned before, but I think are worth repeating. Um, the first is that uh, it can be really hard to tell whether or not a series converges or diverges, um, it, particularly from looking at the sequence of partial sums. So for example, uh, in the previous video, uh, we looked at that harmonic series. So the sum n equals one to infinity of one over n. And if you kind of look at the sequence of partial sums, it grows so slowly, it's not necessarily clear whether it's converging to something or just going to infinity very slowly. So it can be really hard to tell just from that sort of definition, uh, whether or not a series converges or diverges, let alone, even if we know that a series does converge, how do we figure out what it converges, what value it converges to? So um, the, that sum of reciprocals of squares that we looked at, the sum n equals one to infinity of one over n squared, um, you know, we felt pretty confident it converged because we looked at that sequence of partial sums and it leveled off very quickly. Um, but, it looked like it was converging to roughly 1.64, and I told you it was actually pi squared over six, so how on earth would you actually even figure that out? Um, so so those are that's kind of the first point I wanna make, is that this is really hard business. Um, the second point I wanna make that is that if you actually could just know that a series converged, then you would feel really good about looking at the sequence of partial sums, right? So if you knew beforehand that a series converged, then you would say, well, you know what, if I just go out, uh, you know, 10 million terms into that sequence of partial sums, I'm probably going to be fairly close to the actual limit. And, and we'll actually talk later about um, how we can actually quantify the error in certain types of, of series. Um, but, you know, you'd probably feel reasonably good about, about using computation for it if you knew that it converged. Um, so if I'm looking at kind of both of these things, I think the logical conclusion from that is it'd be really nice to have a set of tests that tell me or help me determine whether or not a series converges or diverges. Okay, so that's what we're going to start talking about. Um, so uh, we, we refer to these and, and the book refers to these as tests of, for convergence. Um, that name's a little bit misleading. Um, the reason it's a little bit misleading, well, there are a couple of reasons. The first is not all of our tests will allow us to conclude that something converges. Sometimes our tests will tell us that something diverges. Um, but there again, not all of our tests will allow us to conclude that something diverges. Sometimes the, the tests will say, if the following criteria are met, then it converges. But if the criteria aren't met, we don't know whether it diverges or not. So, so these tests are kind of a mixed bag in terms of what you can actually conclude from them. Um, and finally, I mean, there are a lot of tests which only apply to certain kinds of series, um, series that meet certain hypotheses. Um, and we've already sort of seen uh, examples of this. So for example, we did a lot of stuff um, with geometric series. So we know, for example, that a geometric series converges when the absolute value of that ratio is less than one. Um, that's a convergence test for a geometric series. Um, but it only works for geometric series. So sometimes they can be kind of limited in scope of application. Um, so because of that, um, it's gonna be important for each of the tests that we're going to discuss to pay very careful attention to the hypotheses of the test. So you should really think of the hypotheses as those are the conditions under which the test can be applied. And we also need to pay very close attention to what we can actually conclude. Can we conclude from a test that a series diverges? Can we conclude from a test that a series converges? All these sorts of things are gonna be things that we need to be very careful of. Um, as sort of a summary, we're gonna go through and kind of look at each of these tests one at a time along with some examples. Um, but I'm actually gonna post a handout um, that'll have all the tests kind of combined onto one sheet of paper 
um, from, from part one and part two. Um, so let me just quickly show you um, what that sort of looks like. So if I, I pop over here, um, so it, it's just sort of a handout that says test for convergence at the top and you can see it kind of has all these tests here. So I'll post this. Um, this is a really nice reference as you're, you're working with these. Um, and, and the reason I mention it now is you may actually want to go ahead and if you're able to print it off, print it off, or if not, maybe just kind of copy it into your notes. Um, it can be nice to sort of have these as we go and then you can just sort of annotate them um, yourself and make notes to yourself. Oh, this test I need to be careful because it only allows me to conclude divergence or, or things like this. So I just wanted to point that out that that's a resource that's available to you that, that I hope you'll take advantage of. So now let me just quickly switch back over here to my iPad. All right, so here we are. Um, so take a look at that handout. It, it might be the kind of thing that you want to have uh, with you as we, we get started talking about these tests. Okay. All right, so let's jump right into it. Uh, the first test we're going to discuss is called the nth term test. Um, the nth term test to me is, is kind of, it's a really quick base level check to determine whether something diverges. The only thing you can possibly conclude from the nth term test is that a series diverges. So here's what it says. The nth term test says, if the limit as n goes to infinity of the terms of your series, a n, is not equal to zero, then the series has to diverge. Okay. So if you think about it, right, we're thinking about this sort of series, and you'll notice here I've dropped um, the sort of n equals one to infinity or n equals five to infinity. It turns out that if we're talking about an infinite series, it doesn't matter where we start or where we end. Uh, or well, we're going to end at infinity. It doesn't matter where we start um, because if you get rid of sort of the beginning part of a series, well, that you're just getting rid of some finite number of terms. That's not going to change the value of the series. Um, so anyway, what this is saying is if I have some particular series, I can look at sort of these terms here and I can take their limit. And what this test says is if the limit of the terms is anything other than zero, if the limit of the terms is not equal to zero, then the series must diverge. And the, the way I think you should think about this is, you know, assume that the, the limit of the terms was one, okay? Well, then what does that mean? That means as I go really far out in my series, it's really like I'm adding a bunch of ones together. And if I add together an infinite number of ones, I will get an infinite sum, that, that series will diverge, okay? And it doesn't really matter whether it's one or one half or one one hundredth, right? If I add together an infinite number of one one hundredths, then I'm, my sum is going to be infinite, okay? So the only way I have a hope of a series converging is if this limit is zero, okay? But so what the test here says is if the limit of the terms of your series is not equal to zero, then the series diverges, okay? So let's look at this example here. Okay, so the example down here, I have the sum n squared plus 1 over 2n squared minus 1. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to apply the nth term test, and I'm going to look at the limit as n goes to infinity of n squared plus 1 over 2n squared minus 1. Now if I look at this, let's see, this is a rational function. Uh, the the highest power of the numerator and denominator are about the same, squared, and so this limit will just be the ratio of the leading coefficients. This limit will be one half. And one thing I'm sure of is that one half is not zero. So I've taken the limit of my terms here. These are like my ans, okay? And the limit as n goes to infinity of my terms an is not equal to zero. So my hypothesis of my test has been satisfied. Since my hypothesis of my test has been satisfied, I can apply the test, and the test tells me that this series must diverge. Sorry. So this series diverges. And I think it's good now to get in the habit of, you know, when you're writing something like this on a homework or a test or something, I think it's always right, nice to write not only what happens, does it converge or diverge, but what tests? Now, for the next several, for the, this video and the next, we're gonna be on a slide probably about a specific test, and so it's gonna be fairly obvious, but we'll get in the good habit now of writing that this diverges by the nth term, 
test. All right, so this is really kind of a slick test. I mean, it just I mean, I just take the limit of the terms. I get something. If I get something that's not zero, then it diverges. I'm done. Okay. Um, so let's look at another example. Okay. So uh, this is that series we actually looked at uh, in the last video, and we, we kind of decided in the last video that this this actually converges. But let's imagine we didn't know any of that, and okay. we're just trying to use the nth term test. Uh, so let's see what would happen. So I would need to look at the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n squared. Now that limit is in fact 0, right? The denominator is going to infinity. The numerator is fixed at 1. And so this limit is 0. But note that the nth term test only works if the limit is not 0. Since the limit is 0 here, we cannot apply the test. And so the nth term test doesn't tell us anything about whether this series converges or diverges. As far as the nth term test is concerned, this series could converge, could diverge. We have no idea. So, um, sorry, my, you may hear my okay. phone dinging over I here. Um, apparently, every time I say the word series, Siri thinks I'm talking to her. Um, so I may just have to, to shut her off. Um, oh, I think she's, I take, she's not very happy with that. Well, this is this is the first really good outtake of, of all my uh, videos. All right, I can't get her turned off right now, so I'm just gonna drop her on the floor and hope she won't hear. Um, okay, so where was I? So yeah, so the limit of these terms is zero, but the nth term test doesn't tell us anything when the limit is in fact zero. Okay. So again, uh, I'm really having a time right now, so my thing has decided to not want to update, so let me redo my sharing here for a second. All right, there we go. All right, so there's a couple of remarks about this test. The only possible conclusion of the nth term test is that a given series diverges. You can never write converges by the nth term test. That's, that's not a possible conclusion of the nth term test. The only conclusion over here is that your series diverges. Furthermore, uh, we can't conclude anything when we have a series where the limit of the terms is equal to zero. So in that case, the test just, it doesn't apply. So we need to be, this test is really nice when it works. You look at the limit. If the limit is anything other than zero, then it diverges. But if the limit is zero, it's not, this test doesn't tell you anything. Okay. All right. Uh, the next test we're going to look at is called the integral test. Um, and so the integral test says, suppose that the terms of my series a n uh, are equal to some function of n. So this is really just a notational thing. But I want to think about this, uh, this function as some function of n, where this function is both decreasing and positive. Then the improper integral from one to infinity of f of x dx and the series a sub n either both converge or they both diverge. So what the integral test allows you to do is it allows you to turn this problem about series convergence or divergence into a problem about integral convergence or divergence. Um, so let's, let's take a look at this example we have here. So here I have this 1 over n squared. I'm thinking that as being like my f of n. Okay. So if I then write f of x, f of x would be 1 over x squared. Okay. And so uh, what the, the integral test tells me is, you know, instead of looking at this series, that's a, that's a problem I don't really know anything about. Let me look instead at the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared dx. Okay. Now, this is an improper integral. So there are a couple of things I can do here. One is I can go back to my definition of how I deal with improper integrals. So I could rewrite this as the limit as n goes to infinity, or sorry, as uh, b goes to infinity, of the integral from 1 to b of 1 over x squared dx. Okay. I could then evaluate this integral. Okay. And I could keep going and determine the value. Maybe actually that's a good 
uh, this is a good opportunity to maybe go back and review stuff about improper integrals um, because this is this is a perfect example of, of one that we've dealt with before. Um, but we've actually dealt with this in more specific ways too. This is an integral of the form one to the infinity one over x to the p dx, which we said when we were talking about improper integrals, this converges if p is greater than one. Well, in fact, the problem I'm looking at here has an x squared, so this does converge. So the integral written here does converge. Now, let's be careful. Let's go through our tests and make sure all our conditions apply. So I have a sub n is equal to f sub n, where f of x is decreasing and positive. So 1 over x squared as a function, it's always positive. 1 over x squared, 1 and x squared are both always positive. Ratio of positive things is positive. So f of x is positive. It's also decreasing, right? So if you think about uh, the, the graph of, of 1 over x squared, right, it's going to look something like that. So it is decreasing. Um, so f of x is decreasing and positive. Then the conclusion is, so I can apply the test, and the test says that the integral and the series either both converge or both diverge. Well, I know that the integral converges. And because I know that this integral converges, that tells me that this series also converges. Okay. And so here I can conclude that this converges by integral tests. So the integral test is nice because it allows us to convert this into a question about an improper integral, which is something we've already dealt with and we have you know, some skills to deal with. Um, this is a, a sort of common, I think, mathematical trick, right, is to, to equate sort of two seemingly different things, one of which you already know something about and the other of which you're, you're kind of just starting to figure out. So in this case, you already know something about improper integrals. And this gives me some relationship between improper integrals and series. All right. uh, let's look at another example. This is going to look very similar. Um, so here's the sum uh, 1 over n. Uh, and let me again, I mean, you know, here I am on the slide titled integral test. So let's try the integral test. So here, this is like my f of n. So my f of x here is like 1 over x. Same thing as last time. I'm going to look at the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x dx. This is again an integral of the form 1 to infinity 1 over x to the p dx, where p is equal to 1. This improper integral diverges. And since this integral diverges, then that tells us that this series also diverges. So this diverges by integral test. Now, this might be the kind of thing where you, you start to say, well, you know, I, I kind of feel like I, I know what to do with all of these. Um, actually, in the next video, or yeah, and then at the end of the next video, we'll start doing some other ones. And I'll show you some more kind of complicated applications of the integral test. Um, but right now, I really just want to focus on sort of the hypotheses um, to, to make sure we can, in fact, apply all of these and, and start to understand how they work. We'll work on some more complicated examples a little bit later on in, in part two. Um, so just a, a couple of quick remarks about the integral test. Um, the integral test is one of these tests that I feel really conflicted about. On the one hand, it's a great test because it allows me to conclude both convergence and divergence depending on what's happening with that integral. Okay. So in order to determine whether a series converges or diverges, all I have to do is look at the integral. But the terrible thing is that I have to look at this integral and that integral could be very, very hard. Okay. Or in fact, it might be an improper integral that I, I can't determine whether it converges or diverges. And if I, if, if I can't actually do anything with the improper integral, then the integral test doesn't do me any good. Um, so it, it's kind of great and terrible all at the same time um, because it'll, it gives you an equivalence between two things. If the improper integral is, is reasonable to deal with, then this is a great test. If the improper integral is not reasonable to deal with, then this test just really doesn't help you that much.
All right. Well, uh, you might have noticed actually, so if we flip back just quickly to these two examples. So I had uh, this sum one over n squared that converged. I have this sum one over n that diverged by the integral test. And, and in both cases, we made pretty heavy use of this fact that the integral uh, from one to infinity of one over x to the p dx converges if p is greater than one and diverges if p is less than or equal to one. Okay, and, and this is something that actually we proved uh, back when we were talking about improper integrals. Um, but now I can start to see that this actually should tell me something about series of the form, sum one over n to the p. Okay. In fact, I should get the same conclusions because the integral test tells me that these either both converge or both diverge. Okay. And in fact, that test itself has a name. Um, uh, it's often just referred to as the P test or the P series test. Um, so a P series is a series of the form sum one over n to the P. Okay. And the P test just says the P series sum one over n to the P converges if P is greater than one and diverges if P is less than or equal to one. Um, now, I, I'll write an example or two down here in a minute, but really there's not a lot of, to say here. Um, except that this only works for very particular types of series. So uh, if, for example, I was to look at the sum one over square root of n, okay, this is in fact a P series, right? I can realize this as the sum one over n to the one half. So here my P value is one half. One half is less than or equal to one. And so I would look at this and I would say, oh, this diverges by the P test. On the other hand, if I had something like the sum one over n square root n, this would be the same as the sum one over n times n to the one half, which would be the sum one over n to the three halves. Now this is a P series with P is equal to three halves and three halves is bigger than one. So this converges by the p-test. So again, this is a great test when it works, but it's, well, it only works if you have something that you can easily write in the form one over n to the p. If you now decide to look at something like the sum uh, one over uh, n times the natural log of n, um, you're not gonna be able to write this as a p-series anymore. Um, but in fact, there is something you can do. This is an example we'll look at next time. You can actually apply the integral test here. So maybe if, you, if you're looking for a little challenge here, you, know, you can't apply the p-test here because this isn't a p-series. Uh, but you can apply the integral test. You just have to be a little careful about how you actually do that improper integral. So maybe go back and check on that if you're looking for a little challenge. Uh, if not, we'll look at it in the video next time. All right, so that is in fact where I want to stop today. Um, so those are sort of, if you go and look at your, uh, your handout, those are sort of the first three uh, on that handout. Uh, we'll continue the next video. We'll actually cover uh, four through eight. So there are quite a few coming in the next video. It'll be a little bit of a longer one, um, but we'll look at sort of the rest of those tests. Um, but the things I like about, just kind of quickly to re recap here. So um, as with methods of integration, uh, one of the things we're eventually going to have to deal with is when I see a series in the wild, how do I know which test to apply? Um, and I like each of these because I think that it's actually becomes a little bit easy to, as you work more with these, to determine when to apply them. The nth term test is something I usually just try to apply very quickly. I just look at the series, I look at the terms, and I say, what's the limit of those terms? If the limit of the terms is anything other than zero, then I'm done. I know the series diverges. If the limit of the terms is zero, then I've got to try some other test. So this is usually like a, the nth term test is like a quick screener test for me. Like just quickly try to apply it. If I can apply it, then because my limit is not zero, then great, it diverges. If the limit is zero, then okay, I can't apply it. I need to find another test. Um, the integral test, um, I, I also think is fairly, nice because I can look at the series pretty quickly and say to myself, could I integrate that thing? Um, 
If I can integrate it, then I have some hope of applying the integral test. If I look at it, and it's something like the sum of e to the minus n squared or something, then I'm not going to bother trying to integrate that because uh, well, it doesn't have an integral in a closed form. Um, so it's kind of, again, sort of a quick sort of check. I look at it, you know, could I easily integrate that? If not, move on to another test. If I can, then I'll spend the time to try and integrate it. Uh, and then finally, the p-test is always a quick one, mostly because it only applies to very, very particular kinds of series. So um, I'm really looking for something that I can very quickly rewrite in the form 1 over n to the p. If I can't do that, there's no hope of using the p-test. If I can, I can use the p-test, though, and, and dispense of it very quickly. So these three tests are three pretty quick tests. Um, and, and usually, as we're going through, these are probably three of the ones you'll learn when to apply the quickest, because I think they, they're a little more straightforward about when they apply. Some of these other tests we're going to get into, it will be a little more nuanced to try and figure out, you know, should I apply the ratio test or the, the limit comparison test to this? You know, th those will be a little more subtle, and it'll take a little more practice to determine what series you should use, uh, or sorry, what test for convergence you should use on, on certain series when we're talking about those tests. But for these, these are all fairly quick and straightforward. Um, as always, if you have questions, feel free to shoot me an email. Um, if not, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.